All right, welcome back to Fire to Fork. On this channel, I've offended many people. I'm pretty good at it now. I've offended Italians and French people and probably the English, definitely Americans. I've definitely offended Americans. And the way I've offended people is by ballsing up their recipes. So there's one culture that I just think has been missed out. It's my favorite type of food is Japanese food. So what I'm gonna to do today is try and annoy Japan, which I don't think is possible. And uh, let me go, go into that more. The Japanese have such a fantastic sense of fun and ridiculousness and humor and they love absurdity that, that from the you know anime and these toys and the car culture and the food culture is <clears throat> great. They, nothing is sacred. You can, you can play with things, you can experiment. So my aim here is not actually to annoy anyone. It's it's to embrace that and really play with it and to have some really good lunch because I'm very, very hungry. Don't forget, somewhere in this episode, there is a code word. Use that code word down below to win a copy of my cookbook. So I'm gonna quickly set up and let's get into it. It's been a while since I've used the front runner table. So I've been using the Prado. I mean, throw the camper trailer a lot. So, it's dirty, because it lives outside. But it is the best camp table. Give it a quick. This doesn't need to be spotless, because I'm not actually preparing the food on it. As in like, not directly on the stainless. If you've got one of these and it's looking a bit tired, get a thing of Barkeeper's Friend, it's called. You'll be amazed how good it looks after a little spruce up. In fact, anything stainless, you wanna clean it. Barkeeper's Friend, it's just the best. Now, what am I getting next? Oh, awning, I guess. Next, let's get some charcoal going. So, <clears throat> I'm gonna do this today in a, an actual hibachi grill. If I'm using an actual hibachi grill, I should probably use some proper Binchitan charcoal. So this is a Firo brand. They do like Michelin star restaurants and like this is the top of the top. I mean, this stuff is like, you tap it together, it feels like you're tapping rocks together. It's 99.9% .9 carbon. Um, it's the highest quality charcoal you can get. In fact, I'll show you this. Water bottle. This will actually take the heavy metals, help take the heavy metals out of your water. That's how good it is. So this is, yeah, this is, as I say, like this is the Rolls Royce of charcoal. Uh, <clears throat> because I'm gonna cook some fancy stuff and I wanna use it. It's also the hottest burning and it lasts about three or four times longer than normal charcoal. And also when you're done, you can just pour water on it and then relight it. Not when it's wet, obviously. So. For this, I am actually gonna use a charcoal starter because um, it is quite difficult to light compared to normal charcoal. It's not, because it is just so dense. What am I doing with this bag? There we go. So I'm just gonna do that down on this rock on the floor because I don't wanna start a fire on my table. I might get the little Zippo blow torch actually because that, I don't need it specifically to light this fire, but I, I, I wanna use it later. This is called the Firefast Torch. Which does exactly what it says in the packet. Makes fire fast. All right, leave that for about half an hour. Well, I guess while that's getting set up, I'll take the grill out. Okay. 
So this is an actual hibachi grill. It's made in Perth by a company called Firemate. Um, this is as good of a hibachi grill as you can buy. It's beautifully made. Uh, they are not cheap, but they are very, very good. This is stainless, this drawer, but the rest of it is actually made of corton, which uh, you might know as that rusty looking metal that's designed to rust. And like the rust actually ends up being protecting it. So it's quite a cool material. While I'm waiting for that to get going, I should probably just start some ingredients. I think I forgot my breadboard. That's good. Oh, nah, nah, we're good. Got him. We're gonna have a little while while we wait for one, one ingredient to cook. So I'll do what any reasonable camper should do. Have a drink of water. And then a beer. <clears throat> gonna drive home. I'm not camping here, by the way. Um, I'm just out for the day, out in the state forest. It's lovely. Not camping because I've got a new baby at home and um, yeah, my wife is still recovering and so she can't lift our toddler. So uh, no more camping, no, no camping for me for a few weeks. That's no problem at all. Okay, it's been about 15, 15 minutes or something. Uh, and I think I'm happy to put, pour this in before it's fully lit because the first bit doesn't need as much heat as the second bit. So it can keep lighting in the hibachi grill. So I made a little fire under here because it is surprisingly hard to light. So I'll put this back over the fire. You can't see it down there, but there's a little tiny, tiny, tiny fire. We'll put that over the fire so that it doesn't catch anything. And then quickly put it out. And when I'm done, I'll clear all this up so there'll be no trace that I was ever here. Also realized I forgot to bring tongs, so going well. <whistles> wow, this charcoal is hot. Might get my welding gloves. I'm not even mad, I'm just impressed that I have forgotten this much stuff. Fire cooking gloves, not here. Tongs, not here. Let's see if I can bodge this together. Bloody top of the range hibachi grill, top of the range charcoal, top of, top of the range ingredients, idiot. So, what we're going to do here is put down a bit of aluminium foil in this drawer. Now, I don't know what I've called this video yet. Whatever clickbait title it is, uh, will probably involve the words potato and sushi. So that's what we're cooking, in case you hadn't figured it out. Um, so, the potato of choice is filth. Potato tots, potato gems, whatever you want to call them. These things. These are called Australian Potato Minis. That is a, yeah, stupid name. And I understand that these are like rocking horse shit at the moment. There's a short shortage of them for some reason, so you should be able to find one. Just go to a couple of supermarkets on your travels, and if you find one, chuck it in your freezer and they last ages. Now, I don't want to do too much because it's a lot of sushi, but also gems are life, so. In Australia, we call them potato gems. And in America, and, and it, oh, look, everywhere has lots of names, so I don't think there should be any hard and fast rules about that. All right, get this drawer. We stick it in under here. Now, this charcoal will not get on that, on these gems, because um, there's actually a piece of fine mesh here. The 50 micron mesh, if, I, if that's wrong, I'll put it on the screen, but that's the mesh there, um, and that will stop it from yeah, all the ash falling through. That's all set up, so I think I can just put the grate on it. it keeps ringing, doesn't it? Well, actually, I might put the grate on later in case I need to move it. It's really, really hot, so I'll 
move it now while it's cold. I'll let those gems warm up in the oven. Actually warming up a little bit. Hmm. So the gems are warming up nicely and we're going to start on some of the cold ingredients. So <coughs> we've got, shall do seafood last. Some steak, which doesn't actually need anything being written, anything really done to it. Avo, get some QP out now. And some other stuff. All right. What we're going to do, I've decided I'm not going to cook on the grill. I'm going to cook on the um, spark arrestor because it actually generates the heat up more and it gets insanely hot on this mesh. And this mesh is just like such a perfect platform for doing like a hibachi style thing. Um, so yeah, sharpest knife, which is the filleting knife. I don't think I ever have salt and pepper. Oh no, I do, I do. Yeah, good. That would suck. I'm gonna dry the steak. And then just a bit of salt. Oh, that's not, that's not my pantry. No, I think I left the pantry at the office. Doesn't matter, because a little bit of teriyaki will do a really good job. So I like the Kickerman teriyaki, no affiliation. It's just the, it's the least sweet. They've got a sweet one as well, but I like this, this one on on steak. So I don't want to make this like a full teriyaki steak. I just want to give it a little bit of flavor. So that's a little bit of sugar and a little bit of um, salt. And that should make it, just cut that bit of silver skin there. This is, um, a, I think it's a five score Wagyu. I uh, just got it from my local butcher uh, because I am waiting on a big order of some nice Jack's Creek stuff. And this is one I have to grab in the, in the interim. That is hot. Let's do a quick test piece, I think. And worst case, I eat it. So we are trying to do this super rare. I'm not trying to cook this through because it's going on sushi. These gems are starting to brown. Don't know if you can see that, but they are starting to brown. So I'll try and flip them. These don't need to be super crispy or anything. And you don't want to squish these up or anything because um, you want them to stay in one piece. Okay, it's not as much heat as I thought. I'm going to add some more charcoal. Actually, what I might do, because the gems don't actually need to be hot, what I might do is add more charcoal <coughs> And I think this is just a little bit too high. So let's take this off. Yeah, that's better. I might use that other grill, so it's a bit lower. Or, hey, now we're talking. Look how low, that's right on the charcoal. <laughs> that's what I was after. All right, good to know. I haven't actually used this top piece yet, so it's, it's a learning experience. Just needs to be a little bit closer. It's not what it's designed for. It's, it's designed to stop sparks. So me messing around with it is, yeah, whatever. This charcoal can, when it's fully lit, sits at about 900 degrees Celsius. It's pretty serious. So if I was doing proper teriyaki beef, I would continuously be basting this with teriyaki sauce, but that's not what we're doing. Looks about right. This is not supposed to be hot, by the way. None of this is supposed to be hot. <clears throat> so, take this. I'm going to thinly slice it. Then you want it to be basically raw in the middle. It's perfect. That end bit's cooked, so I'm going to eat it. Very good. Next, prawns. These are nice, fresh. WA tiger prawns, rip the heads off, cut them in half, prawn meat out, 
Devane. Some scallops. Scallops, scallops, whatever you want to call them. Cut them in half to the right size. All I want on them is just a touch of soy. Just for a bit of salt. Just a quick wash. None of this should be cooked very well, as in like, well done. So even the prawns and scallops, they're super fresh, never been frozen, so they can all stay relatively raw. Steak's done. Scallops can all be flipped. I mean, all of this stuff you can eat raw. I know it seems weird to eat raw seafood, but you can if it's good. So if you, if you don't want to use Wagyu, just get scotch fillet, um, or ribeye, or whatever you want to call it. Um, <clears throat> and use that, whatever the nicest, most tender piece of meat you can for the steak one. All right, scallops done, scallops, scallops, oh, still don't know. What is it? Tell me in the comments, scallops or scallops? Yum, 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 yum. Oh, it's so good. Okay, now, traditional salmon. Skin off, salmon, and you just want to slice this nice and thin. And we're not cooking this, this is raw. Although, I do like a bit of seared salmon. So maybe I'll do like two tiny bits of seared. And this is sashimi grade salmon. Seared one side on the salmon, and that's all done. Not supposed to be like, um, not supposed to look browned or anything like that. Oh, that's the problem. It falls apart. Oh well. One bit of, oh, one and a half bits of salmon. Oh, and look at that, just in time, gems are done. I actually want these gems to cool down though. I know it seems weird that everything's getting cold, but sushi's cold. I have said for as long as I've had this channel that I will continue to find new and creative ways to eat steak and potatoes on video. Steak, potatoes, sushi. <laughs> I think I'm succeeding in this episode. This is so much sushi. I want to keep this charcoal because as I said, it's, it's very good and quite expensive. Um, so now I'm finished cooking. I'm going to, you take the drawer out, get the machine, the device, the fire mate, the, that thing. The inventor calls it the machine, so that's why I'm in the habit of calling it the machine. And you extinguish the charcoal. Probably covering my chair and crap at the same time. I'm supposed to drop it in a bucket of water, but I don't have a bucket of water. And I think it's time to plate. Oh, oh. Green stuff. Just a little bit of avo. So, I want some good soy in here. Little dab of wasabi. I'd love real wasabi, but I don't even know where to get it. This is something you can actually do. So I wanted to use ingredients you can actually get from a supermarket. Okay. Salmon and avo. Now with the seared salmon, I like to use a little tiny bit of a thick sweet teriyaki. It's like one little blob on there. Same with the um, scallop. Oh, that's gonna be tough. The scallop's not gonna sit on there that well. Just there's my finger. Mm. Squish that down. Yeah, that works. So I squish the gem. Scallop, sauce. I am so not a sushi chef. I'm sorry, Outdoor Chef Life. Please don't at me on this. You're going to castrate me for such a terrible job. Taku, I'm sorry. If you haven't seen Outdoor Chef Life, awesome chef. His name's Taku. He's from Cali, I think, and cooks amazing food. And he's a, he's a professional 
So it's your chef. Okay. Oh, we're gonna have some rarer bits for this. Geez, I'm not good at very good at presentation. Bugger it. Let's film it. All right, let's try this. I'm gonna start with steak, because I think it's the thing I'm most excited about. A little bit of soy. Tastes like steak and potatoes. Win. Mmm. That with wasabi and soy. Mmm, ooh. I'm gonna try one of them with a bit of the sweet sauce, actually. A bit of the thick teriyaki. Mmm. 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 Better with just the soy. Let's try another sweet one. Scallop. That rocks. This is scratching that sushi ish. Itch. Oh, something I probably should have explained. The reason I'm doing this is because um, sushi rice is really hard to make well. So I thought, what if we tried something, something else and got something really easy to cook and made it with that. So yeah, we'll see how we go. And here we are. And so far, I love it. I really genuinely love this. Prawn. Ooh. Yum. This is not, I mean, it's sushi, but it's, it's called nigiri. Be careful saying that word. I wasn't sure if cooked and uncooked would go together. It's excellent. Now the important test. I already know the answer because I did actually technically have a little swig. Yes, it goes amazingly with beer. Oh, it's so good. I mean, how could it not? It's, it's crunchy and salty and, oh, right. Seared salmon. Oh, that might be my new favorite. Mmm, that is my new favorite. Last but not least, salmon and avo, a classic. Beautiful. Even though it's delicious, I still find it kind of a basic one. I don't know. It reminds me of cheap sushi, even though it's all good stuff. Something about salmon navo that just always, I get the vibe of cheap sushi. I don't know, maybe it's because they always have a salmon navo of, of option. All right, I'm gonna smash the rest of these, finish my beer, mm. and have a nice drive home. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. This seared salmon. Oh, I'm gonna blowtorch one. If you're still watching it to see this. Yes, I'm using gas. Sue me. Seared, soyed. Oh, I want some of the sweet stuff like the other one. Oh, do that. I'm blowing hot in the rest.